this match. It's Puck versus Minigun. Who's going to take it? Over in the bottom right hand position is the blue Protoss. It is root for root Puck. On here in Belshir Vestige and his opponent in the top left hand corner. It is the red Protoss player, root Minigun. Uh, positionally, I mean, we have a symmetrical. Um, we have a symmetrical map, so things aren't going to really change that much. But I do want to focus a little bit more on the build orders that happened last time. I don't know. Well, it comes down to them being practice partners, and we could talk a little bit about this. Like when you play against a practice partner or even your teammate in a tournament, it's so easy to get build order countered. Yeah, I feel like Minigun thought that he could beat Puck in a straight up game since he's beaten him a couple times recently. So I think he just wanted to keep him honest with that through gate pressure like you were talking about. And when he when he tried to keep him honest, he's like, hey, you were being too greedy and I can punish it. And he punished it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too because if I'm Puck and I feel like you most of the time have the advantage, a lot of pe people go for that slight advantage in the beginning phase like, hey, I'm going to get an extra expansion on you. Just try to make it like a build or a counter mm -hmm. against a wide range of you and defend against any all-ins if it comes. And he did a good job defending against it, but... Obviously, it wasn't enough. Yeah, the defense was actually closer than a lot of the time I see it when I see these builds against each other. Because Puck made a pretty nice move of warping in the right units at the bottom mm -hmm. and some good force fields as well. Man, I tell you, if it, especially on this map, if he goes for the same thing, let's say he puts a pylon the same place, like right over here so he can start warping in. If you put a robo right there, mm -hmm. I really feel like that is a defensible position if you're going against 3-gate. Yeah, you need it on the low ground, though, because otherwise you just get the ramp force goaded. Although yep. maybe on this map it's better. The other map, the problem was the foot and overcharge didn't keep the units far enough back, so we couldn't force field the true. ramp. That's true. Yeah, so this map makes a much better m map to do that one base pre or one base expand, one gate expand. But he might try something else. I feel like Puck won't play a completely standard game against Minigun, just because in, in the past Minigun's usually beaten him in it. So I think we'll see him try something tricky, maybe some one base tech, maybe another quick expansion. We'll have to see what he wants to do. Yep. He's getting in there very early and seeing how much Chrono Boost is being allocated, if at all. And he sees about two Chrono Boosts being saved up. So when you're a Protoss and you do that early scout, that's what you're looking for. Can my opponent actually do a gateway all in? And he says, yes, he can. I don't know if it's probable, but he can do it. I have to be a little bit safer. I can't do super, super greedy builds. He's going for the Stargate. Yeah, so we'll have to see if he wants to use the Stargate to throw down a quick expansion or do the kind of one base Stargate style mm -hmm. with three to four gateways. Just pump lots of units and you use it for an all in. Look at this, Stargate coming out for Minigun as well. So this is going to be the classic, you know, Oracle and then maybe Phoenixes afterwards or just constant Oracles. I don't think it's going to be a Voidery All-In. Normally we see Voidery All-Ins if it's mm -hmm. Proxy and there's an expansion popping out here. I think this is my favorite PvP matchup to, to see actually Stargate against Stargate. On one base it could be kind of interesting. I think decision making plays a big part in who wins. Yes. As well as who gets the... who kind of scouts the other player's Stargate first. Yeah, well, oh, and Phoenix is from Puck starting out of that Stargate. That's really? going to help him a lot against the Oracle. Oh, and incredibly. Minigun. And look at his rally point. He's going to keep them inside the base. So he can accrue maybe two Phoenixes, maybe three Phoenixes by the time the Oracle gets over to them. I think he might even have three. Yeah. Phoenixes make pretty fast. Yes, they do. Just about one Chrono Boost and they're finished up. Uh, so this is a really good, really, really good position for Puck to be in. Now, the one thing is there could be a situation where the Phoenixes leave the base and the Oracle enters. And that's like the absolute worst case scenario. Can this two pylons see each other? Kind of up on the left side. It's kind of funny. No, they, they both have no. proxy pylons right next to each other. They, so neither sick. of them know it. So sick. There you go. I, I do like Puck's position a lot better. He has four gateways behind this. And oh, the Phoenix is! He knows it's coming too. He's keeping them back and looking for it. He's poking out a little bit. Uh oh. And Minigun actually has a second Oracle too. This could be bad for him, I think. This will be bad for him. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> Three One rounds kill. of shots. Yeah. And he's gone. That is insane. Is it... You got a probe kill? One. And, yeah, this already isn't looking good because this is a situation where the oracles are completely useless and the phoenixes have that disable ability. 
Mm -hmm. so it helps out so much. Oh, if yeah. you have about even gateway counts, the, the player with the Phoenixes will completely crush the other player. Yep. And we've already seen that in the Crank vs. Minigun game on Akalon Waste. That was very, very clear. And I like what Minigun is doing. He's just hiding this Oracle. And he's going to wait until there's an engagement. He shouldn't be attacking in because the Phoenixes could be anywhere. He's going to wait until an engagement happens and then push in with the Oracle, taking advantage of the Phoenixes being out of position. But I think what could be pose a problem is that neither of them have made a Mothership Core, which matters a lot more for Minigun than Puck, because Minigun, if oh. he pushes, it could prove troublesome for... And look at this. Oracle is getting in here. I really don't like the timing of this Oracle. He's push putting it in there where there could have been four or five Phoenixes just waiting for everything. Of course, he was taking advantage and kind of anticipating where those, uh, those Phoenixes were. But was it worth it? I mean, I, I feel like stressing your opponent, just putting down an expansion, forcing an engagement over here, and then using the Oracle then is a much better situation. Now we're going to see Puck just start to mass up a lot of units. He's actually going to Twilight Council. Could be for Blink, could be for Dark Templars. I think it's probably going to be for Blink. Yeah, I think it'll be for Blink as well. Although he could maybe go Dark Templar once he scouts the main base of Minigun, because he knows Minigun isn't going to make any more Phoenixes or Oracles because he already has the Phoenix advantage. Mm -hmm. So Dark Templar could be a possibility, although Blink's more likely. I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, he hasn't expanded yet. Yeah. Uh, it, it almost feels like both of them are playing chicken with each other. And there's the Dark Shrine. So it'll be doing Dark Templars. It makes a lot of sense for the amount of centuries that he got. It synergizes a lot better, I think, than with Blink Stalkers in PvP. Yeah, what's important, I think, now is just him denying any scouting. Because if Minigun sees there's no expansion started yet, he might kind of think, hey, what's going on here? Why haven't you expanded yet? You're not pressuring me? Maybe you're going for DTs. Yep. And the probe has been able to slip out, by the way for minigun. Mm -hmm. uh, blink is already finished, so he needs to be so careful. One phoenix is ready down, another big blink, but he will not be able to catch any more of those phoenixes. Expansion is going to be thrown down, uh, finally. And guess what? We still do not have any detection. Yeah, minigun's pushing out now, but the Dark Shrine is only about 30 seconds away. And now that he's scouting this, I think maybe... Oh! And uh, I think is minigun... There's actually pylons right next to Minigun's base, too, so the yeah. DTs are going to be warped in right next to him. Minigun went into this actually assuming that the Nexus is already finished. And when he sees this, that it's only halfway done, he should actually have some alarm bells being triggered right now, saying, what the heck? Why do you have such a late expansion? You have your Phoenixes. It hasn't really grown in number. What could you have possibly been making? And by that time, it's already too late. Oh, maybe not. Archon, there it is. Oh, but yeah, so he got a DT into the main, and Minigun needs to start an Oracle, but I don't think he's starting in time. And that pylon's going down to the DT, yep. powering the Stargate, and then there's no detection for Minigun, <laughs> and, and he's he was, just dead. Even the Archon is doing so much damage, now pushing all the way into the main base, but you can see... Photon overcharge, lots of units. Yep. Things are looking great. I mean, the, even the Phoenix is doing a great job. Zealots uh, directly engaging with these Stalkers. They actually do a surprising amount of damage if they're not blinked back. And that's going to do it for Minigun GG. Being torn apart in his main base, being torn apart at the main battle engagement.